In the grimdark futuristic scape of Warhammer 40k, Space Marines are finely tuned, killing machines, annihilating anything in their path. And in Space Marine 2, you and your battle brothers will get to take part in these heroic battles. It may seem a little daunting at first, and that's why you're here, to get the best starting tips for your SM2 journey in order to, well, in order to kick some ass. Hi there fam, it's Deck. Thank you for clicking on this video where I will take you through the most crucial tips and tricks for your start in Warhammer 40k's Space Marine 2. Now let's go! Starting off with a cool one, let's kill the leaders. So, we'll start with something the game tells you but kind of in a roundabout way through the time trials. The Terminate Swarm is exactly that, a swarm. This means that they will fill the battlefield with ads, slash miners, or the way SM2 calls them, Minoris enemies. Oftentimes, they're controlled by a major or majoris enemy. If you focus and kill these majors, you will notice a bunch of the miners will either get stunned for a long time or straight up kill over and die. You will know you've killed a leader if after you finish doing your job on it, an effect which looks like this appears above its head. This will be a big tip for your higher tier operations where the difficulty is increased, the enemies are tougher and the rewards are greater. So try not to focus on the chef, go straight for the boss. Tip number two is only three letters, A-B-E, which stands for always be executing. Executions are useful for multiple reasons, the main one of them is that that's the only way for you to restore your armor while in combat. Enemies will flash red when you are able to execute them and you can activate your execution from a fairly large distance. Once you do activate the animation, your character will run towards its target and it won't stop until it performs the full animation. You will also get execution on minor or minoris enemies if you perform a perfect counter on their attacks, which can happen often and in abundance. So watch for a blue indicator. If the enemy is in your field of view, you will see a blue circle when the time comes for you to perform the counter. If they're outside of your range, you will still get a blue indicator pointing in the general direction of their attack. But be careful, orange indicators can only be dodged. Tip number 3. Counters, dodges and gun strikes. Something the game doesn't really tell you is that you can counter pretty much all melee attacks apart from the ones which come after an orange indicator. The blue indicator only shows you the time for you to do a big counter or execution, but it's not necessary for you to counter a melee. After you do that successfully, you will have the opportunity to do a gun strike which will also give you back some armor or contested health. The good thing about it is that you don't need to perform it right after a counter, instead you can input a bunch of melees on your target before performing the gun strike. This is a habit I got into, because if you do that, then you perform your gun strike, oftentimes you will bring the enemy down low enough for you to perform an execution, so your single target DPS gets to be quite intense. You will also get the same opportunity if you perform a perfect dodge. You will know you've done a perfect dodge if you get a time slowdown effect right after you dodge an attack. The timing of it is a bit different from the Souls games, but if you played a lot of them, you'll feel right at home. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel for even more Space Marine 2 content. Now let's get back to the tips. Tip number 4 is to be aggressive because you have iframes and white health. In a lot of games, we're used to staying back and staying away from damage. Here you have a multitude of ways of restoring your health as we've covered in the previous tips. So instead of playing like a little sissy wuss, you have to get in the thick of the combat and rip and tear. This is for all intents and purposes pretty much a horde fighting game. You will get swarmed very quickly so conserving your health in a lot of cases is not the best thing that you can do. A great tip for performing executions on Majoris or higher tier enemies is marking them by clicking X on PC or the corresponding button on console. Once marked you will see how close it is to being executed by tracking how empty the little circle in its center of mass is. Something we did not cover yet is that while performing an animated attack like an execution or gun strike you are fully invincible. On top of this, as I've told you in the second tip, you can start your executions from a very far distance, so you can get a lot of time of invulnerability. Dodging around also gives you some iframes, so dodging can also be quite strong on those higher difficulty tiers if you perform these dodges correctly. Don't forget about the contested health which shows as white in the HP bar. If you perform executions or deal damage while you have white HP, it will restore the health which you have lost. The Melter Rifles are especially great for this purpose. The next tip is how you can interrupt enemies who are calling for reinforcements. Majoris enemies and missions will start calling for backup when their numbers start dwindling. You can and should interrupt them whenever you see the icon that shows you that this is happening. There's a couple of ways you can do this interruption. You can either use a hard hitting weapon like for example a Melter Rifle or you can use your melee weapon's stance break moves. 
Stance break moves are noted by a broken shield in your pause menu when you click escape and you check your weapon's melee combos. You should familiarize yourself with your weapon's combos, as stance breaking is useful for staggering all enemies, but especially when Majora's enemies try to get more of their hordes on the battlefield. As soon as you break their stance, their call is interrupted and you can just go to town on them. The higher the difficulty, the more important it is for you to do this. For our next step, make sure you explore around. While in missions, be it campaign or operations mode, make sure you explore the levels. They are very linear, so in almost all cases there's only one right way for you to get to the next objective. Which means that if you see a divergence in the path, you will likely end up to something like an ammo cache. Data slates which contain audio recordings, revive relics or armory data. We'll cover what armory data is soon, but you will need a bunch of it for upgrading your weapons for your operations. Something else the game doesn't tell you is that you can break these wooden crates. Just roll into them to tear them apart and get to the goodies inside. It can be anything from extra ammo to med stems which the game is quite stingy with, so you will need every single one you can get. And for the collectors out there, the data slates can be tracked so you will know which ones you're missing. Not only that, but since operations are running concurrent with the main storyline, you will have different sets of slates between the campaign and operations mode. So take the time to look around, you never know what you might find. And now let's get to the upgrade system. The game treats PvP and PvE as completely different entities. They do share some similar rewards, but for the most part, what you do in PvE won't reflect in PvP. And why is that? Well, for the sake of balance, in PvP you cannot have one guy with a bolter that has less spread than the person he is fighting. From both modes you will get requisition points, which are pretty much your Warhammer box. You will use these to purchase things like weapon upgrades after you unlock them, passive skills for your class, armor heraldry colors, patterns, emblems and other cosmetics. I would advise you to consider saving these for upgrades first and after you get all your upgrades focus on your customizations. You will also unlock different armor sets by playing either one of the two available modes for PvP or PvE. For example, to fully unlock the first set of armor for your class, you will just need to complete 7 overall operations or eternal war matches, either one or both will do. You will also get experience to level up your different classes, but the experience from PvE won't transfer over to PvP. An operations experience will allow you to unlock different passives, which you can then buy with your Warhammer box. And in PvP, increasing your class's level will unlock more weapons for that class. For your operations passive upgrades, you will only be able to keep one skill per column. You will gain more experience per match completion the higher in difficulty you go in your PvE play sessions. In these op, you will also have armory data. You should get armory data after completing an operation successfully. You will also have the ability to get more of it from hidden spots throughout the levels or bosses that spawn from difficulty 2 onward. The rarity follows the familiar to all gamers rare, epic and legendary levels. I don't care what they're called in game, they're green, purple and gold so that's what they are. For the epic armory data you can only get it from the difficulty level 3 and for the legendary armory data you can only get it from difficulty level 4. You will also use this armory data to unlock higher tiers of your weapons. This also unlocks a weapon's appearance slash skin which is something you can also use in PvP. This whole system is actually one of the simpler ones I've seen from games. For the next step I'll tell you how you can get your upgrades very quickly. You can get some really quick upgrades by completing each class's time trials. These are fairly simple to do for most of the classes. You just need to complete them with the maximum grade possible in order to unlock your armory data and a healthy amount of requisition points. I would recommend you go through these in your free time as it's pretty much free upgrades for you. You should also take a look through which weapons are available to which classes, as a lot of the classes don't have access to a bunch of the weapons, but they also share a couple of guns between each other. For example, the regular bolt pistol and chainsword are available to most classes in game. Focusing your resources and time towards upgrading these weapons will prove valuable and optimal. This way you will be able to take a class that you haven't leveled up a bunch into a higher difficulty mission and get to boost it much faster as the higher the difficulty the more experience you gain. And while this is not an upgrade per se, unlocking the different armor skins will go much faster if you go into PvP as eternal war matches naturally take much less time than operations. Now let's speed run through a bunch of tips which will prove incredibly valuable for your gameplay. Use your grenades as often as possible, nades are fairly abundant 
content in the game so there's no need for you to be conservative with them. They are all quite strong and you are just doing yourself a disservice if you're keeping a hold of them way too hard. You will also find loadout machines in the levels. These are not only for switching your loadout but they will also refill your ammo. You just need to select the same loadout as the one you're already using. Another awesome tip is that you don't have to wait too long for your charged attacks to be ready for use. Just follow the animation. As soon as it changes, you can do your hard hitting smash move. You should also use your class abilities as often as you can, since it's pointless for you to keep these off cooldown while waiting for the perfect moment. Something else you want to keep track of is the status effect buildup. A lot of enemies can either toxify you or put you in an LSD trip. These are obviously debuffs you should try to avoid. Finally, while fighting terminates, you can destroy the green barbed wire looking obstacles that the snipers drop for the purposes of obviously not getting debuffed. And that's about it for the video fam, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel for even more Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 videos. And I'll see you in the next one.